Now we're going to talk about a play that I call the Johnny Chan play. But frankly, I can't think of a better name to call it. So since Johnny Chan is the master of the check call and lead the turn play, I thought it would only be appropriate to credit him with this weapon. When you're out of position on the turn, your ability to maneuver is limited. Johnny Chan developed a play years ago that would allow him to neutralize his opponent's positional advantage over him with minimal risk. Strangely, this is a play you should never consider making in limit hold'em, but in no limit hold'em, it can be a very effective way of taking control of a hand while at the same time playing small bet poker. Let's look at an example of how this play works. At a nine-handed table with blinds at 200, 400, and a 50 ante, a player from middle position raises to 1,200. You, pretend you're Johnny Chan for this example, call from the big blind with pocket tens. Both you and your opponent are sitting on more than 30,000 in chips. Now the flop comes queen 4-4. Four, four. Not a great flop for your hand, but it's not exactly a terrible flop either. So you check, and your opponent makes a continuation bet of 2,000. You literally have three options here, all of which you may use depending on your opponent. If your opponent is one that never bluffs, you may consider folding right here. Or, if you feel as though your opponent plays pretty aggressively, you could check raise the flop to say 5,500. Or, you could do what Johnny Chan or I might do and just call the bet. Let's say you've just called. Now the turn card is a seven, meaningless. You could check it again and hope that your opponent gives up on the betting, or you could pull a Chan and take control of the hand by betting it yourself. If you bet 3,000 on the turn, your opponent will be forced to guess where you're at. Could you have a four? Of course, you were in the big blind after all. Could you have a queen? Why not? If your opponent is sitting there with the best hand, there is a chance that he might not even raise you. With a queen, pocket kings, or aces, he may fear that you have the four and just call your bet. If he does call your turn bet, you have to assume that your pocket tens are no good. So unless you catch a ten on the river, you can safely muck your hand if he bets the river. If you do have the best hand, however, by betting the turn yourself, you avoid having to face a larger bet on the turn, guessing as to whether your tens are good and your opponent is bluffing. Your bet is a protection bet in many ways. It protects against overcards when you have the best hand, and it also protects yourself from facing a larger bluff on the river. Now, your opponent could raise you on the turn as a bluff, but it's highly unlikely and only a handful of players are capable of that play. To keep them off your back, you'll also need to play very strong hands this way from time to time as well. There is one added bonus to playing your hand this way. You could bluff out the best hand. Let's say that instead of tens, you had pocket sixes. You make that same play, and you'll have a good chance to take the pot away from an opponent with pocket sevens through jacks. If they happen to call you on the turn, it will almost certainly be check-check on the river. So all it will cost you is the small turn bet. Now, you might be wondering why this play is sometimes better than check-raising on the flop. It costs you virtually the same amount, but the information you receive won't be as telling. Your opponent is more likely to call a check-raise on the flop with a wider range of hands than if you were to check-call and lead the turn. Since your opponent is more likely to call the flop bet, that creates another problem for you on the turn. What do you do now? With the pot being so much bigger, a standard bet is going to cost you about 10,000 in chips. Betting is very risky since your opponent called the flop. More often than not, you'll be forced to check the turn and then once again be forced to guess if your opponent bets. Obviously, there are pros and cons to this play and it should be used sporadically. I've talked about the pros, which far outweigh the only real con, free cards. By letting your opponent see the turn card, he might outdraw you if he had, say, ace-jack or something like that. The good news is, it won't be hidden. If an ace hits the turn, you aren't committed to following through with the play and can abort mission. Besides, you won't be giving your opponent two free cards, since if the turn is a safe card, you'll be taking over the lead on the turn. Now, in limit hold'em, this play just doesn't make any sense. In limit, you would certainly go ahead and check-raise the flop if you plan on betting the turn. Check-raising in limit isn't as risky, since it only costs you one bet on the flop, and it doesn't affect the size of the turn bet. However, in no limit, check-raising makes the pot bigger, which also means that it will force you and your opponent to make bigger bets. Since this is a marginal situation at best, that's the last thing you want to do, especially out of position. By using the Chan play, you take control of the size of the pot on the turn by not allowing your opponent to, to decide how much goes in on the turn, unless, of course, he's prepared to raise you. In closing, it's important any time you are using a play to make sure you have the right opponent. Many top pros will see through this play, calling it the weak lead, and they will pounce on it as a bluff. These types of players are in the minority, though. Most average players would never try to take this pot away from you.